Okay, guys, so let's give this exercise a go. If you wanna try it without me, let me get out of the way and you guys can take a good look at the exercise. Pause the video if you want. Try all M parts, because if not, let me now jump back in and let's try this problem here now, yes? So we have this diagram, it's called f of x, this function, uh, f of x, f of x. Whenever it says f of x, it's just referring to this picture. And we have like a whole, a whole, a whole solid point, solid point. Let's see how this works. So here they're telling us that they want the x coordinate to be close to one from the right hand side. So watch, I I'm not gonna go here because none of these points have an x coordinate that's close to one from the right hand side. The points along this portion of the graph have x coordinates of like three to four. I don't want that. And I don't want to go over here because all of these points, their x coordinate, like the x coordinate of this point, is nowhere near one from the right. Now, when I say one from the right, I mean one and a little bit bigger than one, like 1.01, 1 1.1. 1 .1. So really where I should be going is like a point somewhere here. Because if you pick any of these points here, Notice that any point that like, for instance, this point here, if you drop it, that has an X coordinate of like one and a little bit bigger than one. But what I want is I wanna get really close to one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my finger closer and closer and closer and closer because what's happening? I'm getting points whose X coordinates are really, really close to one from the, from the bigger side of one. Now look, I'm never really gonna get there because I can't because there's a hole, but I can get really close. So I wish I had like a microscope so I could really zoom in. But the best that I can do is just say, hey, let's stop right there. Let's pick this point here. Because this point has an X coordinate that's really close to one from the positive or from the bigger side, from the right hand side. Now let me ask you guys this. Right now, where you see my finger located, what is the approximate? Just the approximate. What is the approximate y coordinate of the point that I'm currently looking at? Can we all agree that the approximate y coordinate here is really close to two? And so, such as y, this is equal to two. You see, it's, it's an approximation. Let's try this again. So here for part, so that's the answer to part A. Now for part B, I, I want to approach one, I want to get close to one, but from the left, of one. So, so, so from the left of one means like right behind one. So give me an example of a number that's just behind one. Like think of the number line, right? Think of the number line. A number that's really close to one, but from the left of it is like 0 0.99, 0 0.999, 0 0.999 and so on. So uh, for that reason, I'm motivated. Let me just stand over here. I'm motivated to perhaps pick a point that's like right here or right there or see these points are good because these guys have x coordinates that are getting closer to one but from the left hand side. I am literally positioned my body on the left hand side of this number one. And so what happens is I'm moving closer and closer and closer but yet again guys if you guys look where I'm pointing my finger what is the approximate y coordinate there? The approximate, the approximate y coordinate seems to be again the number two. So notice here what happens, for example, C. Now we're approaching the number one, but before it said one from the right-hand side, which is why I stood on the right-hand side. For part B, it said one from the left, which is why I stood on this side. But now for example, C, it just says one period. It doesn't say from which direction. And any time they don't really specify a direction, whether it be from the right or from the left, that implies that you and I have to actually do both. Yeah, so we have to approach this number from both the left and the right. But good news is that we already did that in the first two parts, right? Here we approached one from the right and then we approached one from the left. In both cases, the conclusion was actually the same number. So for example, C, when they say just one period, you got to look at it from both the left and the right, which we did, and we got the number two, which is why here it would just be the number two. What happens if these numbers had been different? 
What happens if like, if you go from the right and then you go from the left and whatever you get here, you get something different here. What would have been the conclusion over here, right? Because this guy, it doesn't say plus or minus, so you got to do both. But what happens if these are different items? In that case, suppose that these had not been the same thing. Suppose that this had been like two and this had been like one or like negative whatever or anything that's different than this one. In that case, the conclusion here would have been D and E does not exist. We'll get that. We'll do an example like that soon. How about part D? This one here doesn't have a limit notation. It doesn't have, a, is, this, is just, this is just saying go to function f, which is the diagram that you see, and this is literally plug in the number negative one. As a matter of fact, you know what? L let, let me do this to you guys. L let me actually just make this. Let me just change it to a one. I believe that's what the problem should have said anyways. So let's try this here. So let's go to this function f, which is here, and let's plug in one for x. So go to one on the x-axis, which is right here, and then go to the graph. Boom, I'm at the graph. But the problem is there's a hole. There is nothing there. But it's all good because, let me just stand back here. What you do is you look vertically above and below the hole. So if you look above the hole, there's nothing there. But if you look down, boom, we get caught by this point. If this is a roller coaster, you would fall through the hole, but you would get caught by this spot here. And so what you ask yourself is, what is the y-coordinate here? The y-coordinate is negative three, which is why the answer to this part would be negative three. Okay, how about up here? Let's see. So now let's approach three from the right. So three is there, but uh, here's three, but I, I wanna approach it from the right, which is why my body is posi positioned <laughs> to the right. And so what I'm trying to grab these points because these points have x-coordinates that are getting closer to three from the right hand side. And what is the observation, guys? Notice that I can't get there all the way because there's a hole, but I stop. You see, I don't want to get to three. I want to get close to three. You're not quite getting to three. You're just getting close to it. Now look, that's pretty close enough. I'm pretty happy right there because that's pretty close to three from the right hand side. Now let me pause, let me freeze, and let me ask you. What is the y-coordinate at this location? The y-coordinate here is positive one, which is why the answer to this would be positive one. How about this one? Let me approach three. Now three is right here, but now let me approach it from the left-hand side. So let me literally walk over here. And now let's approach three, which is here from the left-hand side. So I'm approaching three from the left. I'm approaching three from the left. Let me stop here. That's pretty close enough. Now you observe that around here, what is the Y coordinate? The Y coordinate appears to be zero, such as why for this example here, F, it would just be zero. How about example G? It, this is says three period. It doesn't say from the left or from the right. So the implication is that we have to come at it from both directions, the left and the right. And we already did that from the previous two parts. Here is three. If you approach it from the left and if you approach it from the right, notice that we arrive at two completely different destinations. So I don't know what to do because from the right, it says this, but from the left, it says that. Anytime your fingers sort of don't end up touching, right? You see how my fingers did not end up touching? then I'm confused, I don't know which is it. Is it the left or is it the right? Because that's the case, you would say that the limit does not exist. Okay, now what about this one? This is a straight up evaluation. You plug in three for X and let's see what you get back for Y. So plug in three, so, so if you plug in three, notice here we're actually kind of lucky because it's solid there, it's actually closed. And so it's just the Y coordinate of this point, which happens to be zero there. And let's try a few, more than, a few more than we can call it a day. So now here it says approach negative two, but there's no direction specified. So you got to do it from both directions. So negative two is over here. So let's just approach negative two from both sides. And if you notice guys, we're, we're getting close to it from both directions. It appears as though the Y coordinate here is going to be negative one. And so that's why this one here is negative one. Now what if you actually just plug in negative two in for x? Well negative two is here. Go to the graph but there's a hole. 
So what you want to do is look above and below it and let's see if there are any solid points either above or below, but it doesn't look like that's the case. It doesn't look like there's any solid point that can catch us like they did earlier. So for that reason, I would say, hey, there is no definition there. I would say that it's undefined. So you see D and E that usually pertains more to like limits, whereas undefined pertains to sort of a Y coordinate that doesn't really exist, right? An output that doesn't exist for a particular input. How about here? Let's approach zero and it's from both directions. So zero is here. So I, I, want, I want to go like this because here, these points, these points have coordinates that are getting close to zero. And as I do so, notice that it looks like the, the limit, my fingers are coming together and they touch eventually, right? Sort of, kind of, I'm getting like this here. It looks like the Y coordinate would have been negative one. And what about here? Let's approach negative one. So negative one is there. Now it just says negative one. It doesn't say from the left. It doesn't say from the right. Well, let's approach negative one, which is here from the right hand side. So here I'm coming close to negative one, but from the right hand side, this goes down to negative infinity. But if I approach negative one from the other side, negative one is here. If I approach it from this side, it seems like it goes up to positive infinity. So I'm not sure what to do because I'm trying to come at negative one from both directions, but from here's negative one, but from one side it goes down, but from the other side it goes up. So one of them goes down to negative infinity and the other one goes up to positive infinity. So they are not in agreement. And so for that reason, the limit does not exist. What about here? What are we doing here? Here, we're sending our x coordinates to negative infinity, a very big negative. Well, the only way for your x coordinates to get really, really, really negative is if you jump on this portion of the graph. Because if you jump on this portion of this roller coaster, if you can call it that, notice that this actually takes you to the left forever. So you'd have to go on this forever to the left because as you move to the left, what's happening to your x coordinates? As you move to the left, your x coordinates are getting close to negative infinity. But the observation, as you move to the left forever, we can observe that the y coordinates are doing what? You see this graph, it seems to level off. And the y coordinate that all these guys seem to be getting closer and closer and closer to, the y coordinate would appear to be negative two. And such is why the answer to that would be negative two. Now, after having done this one exercise, do we expect students to have mastered this? No, it takes more practice uh, with things like this to get really good at this. So maybe we'll drop another video soon, but for now, I hope that was helpful. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below and have a wonderful day. And I'll talk to you guys next time.